Hey guys, how's it going? Yeah, it finally happened. Big ol' Steve has broke. The drama queen in chief has finally left a, a comment on one of my videos. Well, technically this is his second comment, but the, uh, the first comment he left was nowhere near as interesting as this one. If I didn't love these Steve Barra rants enough already, I am now the subject of one. So today is a good day for me. Some of you guys probably know, Steve Barra has just a little bit of an affinity for drama. He's got a flair for the dramatic. So if you're questioning if this is really Steve Barra or not, because he's not commenting this on the Barracks account or anything, he's commenting on this from Steve Barra uh, Google account. So if you're questioning if this is really Steve, I think we can you know, put those reservations away right off the bat with some degree of certainty with the first sentence. I always know when you post a video because I get about a thousand death threats slash kill yourself messages immediately after. Um, so if you're not familiar with Steve Steve's rants, let me just show you this one, uh, which is one that he made after the Sean Davis situation. After last Sunday, you would have thought Sean was ISIS, the Taliban, Hitler, and Dahmer all wrapped up in one. Steve Barra's signature uh, style of writing is that he takes things to the extreme at any given opportunity. And while I do agree that that uh, Sean Davis thing went too far, I think that describing it in that fashion is probably offensive to some people who actually have relatives that were affected by the people that you were mentioning. So Steve, I would dial it back just a little bit because you do come off pretty ignorant when you draw comparisons like that. In the same way, I don't think that it's appropriate to claim that you get a thousand death threats every time I post a video. However, if there is even one or two people out there who are sending Steve death threats as a result of my videos, you're completely missing the point of these videos. Do not tell anybody to commit die. Um, I don't think you're allowed to say the other word on YouTube, but do not tell anybody to commit die as a result of my YouTube videos. Probably any other reason. It's really not something that you should tell another human being. It's totally inappropriate and not at all what I am looking to accomplish here on YouTube. I'm here to have fun. I'm here to entertain you guys. Um, and that's my goal with responding to a comment like this. I thought I'd finally respond to you here on your forum personally as you seem to enjoy attacking the barracks slash myself or anything and anyone in its vicinity. Um, why? I'm not sure. Well, I'm fucking Steve, you, you said it yourself. I love to cover all this shit. I get a kick out of it. Why don't you watch one of my videos and actually open up your ears? Some people seem to think that I have some valid criticisms of the way that you and whoever is working for Hypebeast that you claim is ultimately in charge of things over there at this point. Um, maybe you guys could Instead of turning the comments off every time, you know, the public doesn't agree with the way that you're conducting your business, maybe actually listen to them. I don't know. The lens by which you see the world is a brutal one and something I don't quite identify with or understand. Although the barracks doesn't have anything to do with Mama Skates besides giving her a desk where she can work and fill her orders, something it did for her during the pandemic as she was overwhelmed and needed some room. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me bust out my little tiny violin. I think you picking on her and her sister is pretty weak, particularly because you're a guy. Oh, okay. I was when I first read this, I was waiting for to, for him to expound upon this point. I guess because I'm a guy, I'm not allowed to talk about what any women do. And if you pay attention to my videos, if you notice like a theme that's consistent is I very, very, very rarely say anything negative about women in skateboarding at any point. In fact, I try to be supportive of underrepresented groups in skateboarding. The idea that I cannot cover $1,400 skate pants and, and people smoking weed in their Mercedes Benz and hashtagging Afghanistan on it because they're girls and I'm a guy Get fucking real, Steve. Like, there's a time and a place to call people out for being sexist or being misogynistic. You don't actually address anything that I say in this video. Um, all you do is sort of make a blanket claim and say, it's weak because I'm a guy and I'm a girl, as if they can't take my criticism simply because we're not of the same sex. I mean, that's ridiculous. Uh, I'd show you the post, but Skate Pussy looks like deactivated her Instagram of her and her sister flexing these new Teslas that they're supposedly buying. Meanwhile, I'm driving a Mini Cooper with the door hanging off and I'm not allowed to criticize what they're saying while they try to abuse skateboarding and make a buck off of it. I, I'm out of line for that. 
they're big girls and you know if they're doing as well as they claim to be they're making their way just fine i think they can handle two youtube videos don't you barracks has no control over what she does or how she does it and have no interest in her company however whether you or i or anyone else agree with her choices is it really bothering you so much that you made two videos trying to wreck her yeah i i thought that you know given the circumstances watch the videos if you haven't I don't think I was out of line for making those videos. I think that uh, trying to pull the charity move and, and say, oh, you know, we're charging $1,400 for, for pairs of pants. And then when people uh, criticize you for that, you say, oh, okay, well, we're donating 10% of proceeds to charity. Yeah, I think that most people would agree that that's a bit scummy and that warrants having a YouTube video made about it. I absolutely think that I'm well within my rights uh, to cover something like that. I don't see like why you can't, why you don't get that. Like, it looks like you watch my videos, but all of my criticisms, all of my points, the things that I spend time putting research into, they all just bounce off your head and you just see me as like a terrible person because in my world, not everything is sunshine and daisies like it is in yours. And with all the inconsistencies with brands and people and much bigger wrongs of the industry, why are you focusing solely on just a handful of people? Aren't there larger stories out there for you? Much bigger fish? Or is it just a personal vendetta? Oh, because I made two YouTube videos, it's a personal vendetta? It's not like I was grasping for content with those. There was plenty of content to farm. And believe me, if it was personal, there was a lot more shit that would have been very coverable that I completely ignored because I didn't want to make things too hostile. That was something I did intentionally. So the, the idea that because I, I cover something negatively that it's a, it's a personal vendetta is, is ridiculous. I don't even think you listen to what I was saying in the videos. If you've got a problem with me covering the barracks because there's bigger fish to fry, there's bigger things going on in the industry, please shoot me a DM and give me the lowdown. I would absolutely love to take a break from covering the barracks and, and talk about some of this juicy drama or these big fish that you claim to have intel on i would love to cover those believe me if there was something more interesting to talk about than than the barracks and mama skate pants i would but as i see it they made for two pretty good videos you say you don't want any of your followers to bully the people you talk about but yet that's all they end up doing listen like i said guys do not fucking bully anybody it's absolutely not what we're doing here i think we can reference that sean davis situation as something we can all learn from uh if this is going to be something if my youtube channel is going to be something that's consistently entertaining and available for you guys we have to poke fun and laugh at the stupid shit that goes on in skateboarding uh in a way where we all don't end up getting banned from the internet for for cyberbullying uh, I think we can be critical of people without cyberbullying them. I absolutely don't believe that my last two videos were cyberbullying, and so I don't encourage cyberbullying as a result. After everything the world has been through the last 18 months, this is the result of it? What the fuck does that have to do with anything? <laughs> what do you mean? COVID affected everybody. Because we, we had a pandemic, or we're still having a pandemic, I'm not allowed to make fun of some shit that happens in skateboarding. It's called, That's called a non sequitur, Steve. It has absolutely nothing to do with it. You're just trying to draw like this tragic narrative about COVID into the situation to, to try to make me look like a terrible person because I'm still having fun in my room while the outside world isn't doing as well as it was doing two years ago. It has nothing to do with anything. It's totally irrelevant. Uh, I had to do some stuff yesterday, so then I got halfway through that recording. Listen, I was recording my pizza. I had to take it out of the pizza oven. I had to take it out of the oven. It was an oven pizza. And then I had to go to the dog beach, and then I was just like, I'm not fucking finishing this video today. So here I am the next day to finish this off for you. Um, and let's, let's pick up where we left off, where things get so, so juicy. This is how you want to make your bones in skateboarding? in the world steve barrow one of the most disliked skateboarders uh in skateboarding history i would say is about to tell me how i should pave my way in the skate scene this should be really good stuff it used to be you had to be a good skater or photographer or a filmer or an artist or something that contributed to the skateboarding ecosystem in some kind of way and that's how you earned your voice but times have changed i suppose Okay, so I, I'm not qualified to have a voice on skateboarding because all I do is make YouTube videos, right? That's what you're saying, right, Steve? Um, 
I can't believe of all people uh, that this is coming from you. Like the hypocrisy is beyond belief. Before I even go into that, bear in mind that the topic I was covering was this girl, Skate Pussy, um, who is a self-proclaimed established professional skateboarder. So I'm not going around saying that I'm an established anything uh, or that I'm professional anything. I don't claim anything. I don't have to put an artificial brand or self-promote myself in a way that's inauthentic. Uh, I just get in front of a camera and I talk. People can listen to it, they can like it, or they can dislike it. I don't have to trick anybody or lie to anybody to try to leverage skateboarding to sell my products and pontificate about a title and a status in skateboarding that I have not earned. So the irony of you accusing me of when I am calling somebody else out for doing this same exact thing that you are, are scrutinizing is unbelievable. I, I can't believe that you would seriously comment something like that on my video. Did you watch any of it? Did you did nothing penetrate your skull? You're almost hijacking my own point and trying to use it against me when the people that you're defending are far more guilty uh, of this crime than I am. Let's read this again, because this is only the tip of the iceberg of, of your, your hypocrisy, Steve. It used to be you had to be a good skater or photographer or a filmer or an artist or something that contributed to the skateboarding ecosystem in some kind of way, and that's how you earned your voice. But times have changed, I suppose. As if you aren't one of the primary contributors to making this change in skateboarding. Hey, who made this bracket, Steve? Was it you or was it the guy like standing there with his hands in his pockets who looks like he's embarrassed to be there? Were you not the guy who created an entire influencers section of your battle at the barracks bracket for people just like me, for people who haven't made their way traditionally in skateboarding, but that use social media uh, to, to get a foothold in the scene? You seem to have no problem with it here when it was financially convenient for you, but all of a sudden when somebody uses their platform on social media to speak out against what you're doing, they're now not qualified and they shouldn't be speaking. Seems a little bit ironic to me. I mean, these are the type of people that you're selecting to put in your bracket? What the fuck is this? And you have the audacity to say that I shouldn't be speaking about skateboarding, that I'm not qualified? Put me up against that, dude, Steve. I would love to see who wins that game of skate. You know, and you'd think that that wouldn't be bad enough. As somebody who now owns the proud the proud owner and operator, right, of Bright Skateboards, this is your thing, right, Steve? Let's go over your selection process for your riders, right? Sean Davis, fastest foot in Venice. Right, as the excellent talent scout that you are, you saw fit to put this dude on your skateboard team, which essentially, Steve, what you've done with Bright Skateboards, right? As you've collected a group of social media skateboarders, fuck traditional skateboarding, fuck traditional skate norms, uh, these TikTok skateboarders are so legit, in my opinion, they've earned their place to such an extent in skateboarding that I'm going to sell signed skateboards with their signatures on the bottom of it. So people that have not established themselves in any way whatsoever in skateboarding in a traditional fashion, all they have to show for their career is their social media accounts and their follower accounts. You think so highly of them that with your skateboard company, you're selling their signatures on the bottoms of skateboards. So you must think that they're valuable. But of course, when it's me, when it's somebody who uses his social media, who disagrees with what you're doing, then all of a sudden my voice doesn't count, right? Pretty fucking ironic. While we're on the subject of, of bright skateboards and we're sort of just outlining some of your hypocrisy, Steve, look at, look at a section from this interview with Jenkum Mag. Maybe I sound lame to some people, but you know, I'm old enough now to where I've seen it. If we make drugs and partying so symbiotic with skate culture, eventually that kid is going to get older and skating is going to become less important to him. And when he has his next $50 to spare, uh, does he spend it on a skateboard or does he spend it on partying? If he buys drugs and alcohol, which I've seen many times, uh, then we've lost a customer. I'd much rather be taking customers from the dope man than the dope man taking customers from us. This is the same guy who just did a collab with Angry Orchard for his skateboard company. Angry Orchard sells alcohol. In one breath, you complain that skateboarding is too symbiotic with drugs and alcohol, but then when the paycheck comes knocking, you go, oh, Angry Orchard's alcohol? We'll collab with them. 
Sounds good. This is exactly what happens, Steve, when you prioritize follower count over skill level when you're making your Battle at the Barracks brackets is you're going to have some dudes that skate so poorly that you have to go back and do a web redemption where you film these dudes skating flat just to prove that they can, in fact, land some of the tricks that they were supposed to land in that battle. I don't know what this dude is hiding in that hat, by the way. I'm not sure what's going on with this thing. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So you remember this guy? He did some videos for you guys where uh, apparently, according to him, he was offered $2,000 to do a review of the Karayuma Katiba Pros. And he's no different than me. He hasn't earned his voice in skateboarding in a traditional fashion. He's a YouTuber. He's just like me. But, I mean, as a YouTuber, when he was useful to you guys, you had no problem offering him $2,000 to do a review about the Karayuma Katiba Pro. So when I was talking to them, they told me, oh, they have a lot of backing, meaning, like, they have a lot of money. Like, they have, it's a big company, and Karayuma's a big company. So he said that they'd pay me for my videos. And I looked him in the eyes... And I said, nah, that's cool, man. Like, nah, like, I don't, I don't, uh, like, defeats the purpose of my channel. He gets it. You can't pay people to do shoe reviews. It's completely unethical. It's called a conflict of interest. That doesn't, that shouldn't have to be explained. These are quote unquote ethical shoes, but I suppose the marketing is an entirely different story. We'll just pay YouTubers to tell you that they're great. If that's not manipulation, I don't know what is. A new lane for the new generation that's developed as a result of social media is now scathing criticism. Oh, whoa. God forbid anybody uh, says anything negative about people that are selling pants that were one week were 100 bucks and the next week they're 1400 bucks. God forbid anybody question that. I must be a really fucking terrible dude. So for you to succeed, which it looks like you are right now, all you have to do is sit at your computer. <laughs> and hate people and the things they're doing without ever having to do anything yourself. I suppose that recording these videos doesn't count as doing anything. They research themselves, they edit themselves, they perform themselves. Uh, I don't come up with any jokes. All this shit just happens on accident. And you know what, Steve? I got into skateboarding yesterday. I haven't been into skateboarding for 75% of my life that's led me to have these thoughts and opinions. It all just happened overnight. All you have to do is sit at your computer <laughs> and hate people and the things they're doing without ever having to do anything yourself. And that is your contribution to the culture. It takes some people their whole lives to figure out what their role is in society. I guess I'm glad you found yours this early on. I'm sure you are, Steve. It sounds very genuine. Personally, I don't find any joy in trying to destroy people. Destroy. I just destroyed Mama Skate with two YouTube videos. Uh, even if I don't agree with what they do or how they think, the world can be a brutal place. And I am certainly not perfect, but I'd rather spend my time trying to make it better than criticizing what other people do. You've created uh, a logical fallacy that I think says a lot about your own personal worldview, which is that by criticizing things, no good can come of it, which is, in my opinion, entirely untrue. Um, I think that by being critical of a culture that you care about and pointing out discrepancies and things that you think are bullshit, I think you can absolutely uh, improve the thing that you're talking about. And I guess, you know, you don't think my videos are funny, you don't think that there's any value in them, but not everybody agrees with that. I get tons of comments and DMs of people saying that they appreciate what I do, and I'm very grateful for everybody that enjoys what I am doing here. And ultimately, the only reason I ever started this YouTube channel, if you look at almost any other subculture, at least in my experience, or genre of hobby, things that people are in into, on YouTube, you can pretty much find somebody who's willing to sit in front of a camera and speak about the good and the bad and be blunt and honest about the things that they don't like about what's happening in their community. And as far as I could tell in skateboarding, on YouTube specifically, I wasn't able to find that. So that's the reason I started making YouTube videos is because I'm making the YouTube videos that personally I would want to watch. You know, with the exception of maybe like the Bunt podcast or something, it's very difficult difficult to find people in skateboarding that are willing to get in front of a camera and speak candidly about the things that upset them or concern them in the skateboarding community as it is right now. Seems like the majority of the content is exactly the sort of stuff that you want it to be, Steve, which is just 
everything is awesome, sunshine and rainbows, skateboarding is perfect, and there is no bullshit in the industry whatsoever, uh, everything's dope, which is absolutely something that I don't agree with, you know, and the reason I think that people gravitate towards the Bunt podcast, for example, so much is those guys are willing to say exactly what they think. They don't sugarcoat anything and they don't bullshit anything, which in my opinion is rare. So I think that the fact that my channel has seen the relative success that it has in the brief period of time should tell you more about what skateboarders want than, than anything else. I don't think it's a coincidence. Like I said, I'm simply making the videos that I personally would want to watch. Despite any mistakes, the Barracks has personally helped thousands of people and have been very generous and giving to the community over the last 13 years, especially when it was under my full control. Well, I'm sorry that you sold everything to Hypebeast, Steve, and they maybe took the checkbook away and you can't do the things that you used to want to do, but ultimately, the barracks is still your thing. That's how it appears from the outside. It's your face people think of when they when they watch the, when they think of the barracks. Um, you control the Instagram account, right? I mean, who else is posting those thoughts on cancel culture and arguing with children in in the comments section? I don't think that's anybody else but you. Um, you even sign some of your messages, right? You come up with the battle at the barracks brackets. As far as I can tell, a large degree of what's happening is still under your con under your control. So listen, I don't know about exactly who does what at the barracks and how much hype beast is controlling things, but listen, this is the real crux of the issue in my opinion. And I think I can answer your question here, which is why has it become a target of hate for you lately? I suppose I'll never know. Oh, I guess you won't ever know. I guess all the videos that I put out about the barracks, you just don't listen to anything that I say because it seems like you're completely incapable of taking any criticism whatsoever. Um, so here it is. The barracks has personally helped thousands of people and have been very generous and giving to the community over the last 13 years. I actually uh, completely agree with this and this is why people care. This is why I make videos about the barracks is because the barracks has historically been this institution that has created content and given back to the skateboarding scene itself, given directly back to skateboarding in ways that are tangible and obvious. So for example, one of the things that I can recall about the barracks that I used to like a lot, the, these, these contests where you guys would do best skate crew video gets $20,000 or whatever the, the paycheck may have been at any given point in time. And that was something that was you were got you guys were directly giving an incentive to skate crews and financially rewarding them for creating authentic skateboard content like a skate video. I mean that was inherently just giving back and promoting and accelerating the skateboarding ecosystem in a positive way. This is exactly why people care about what the barracks is doing now because we've seen something that we all used to care about just slide further and further and further downhill into the depths of shit that it's currently residing in. So, you know, instead of creating these these contests where you guys give directly back to skateboarding, now what are we doing? We're working with 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 corporations like Liquid Death and fucking a Karyuma where uh, we're do you guys are doing these partnerships where instead of worrying about s the sustainability and, and the health of skateboarding by doing these contests that, that give directly back, it's all pseudo bullshit activism where you where 10% is donated to fucking who knows where um, and we're saving the planet by fucking reducing plastic consumption and blah 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 blah. Meanwhile, the people that you should actually be caring about, skateboarders in my opinion, like it seems like more or less they're kind of of left to the wayside. That's how I see it. And that's why skateboarders care. You don't see me sitting in front of a camera and making videos about Braille, because I don't give a fuck. I never gave a fuck about Braille. As far as I'm concerned, pump out bullshit content for children. I don't care about Braille because they never made videos that interested me and they were really never something that I felt like was meaningful in the space of skateboarding. That's not true for the barracks. I grew up on the barracks. I used to love the barracks and seeing it in the state that it's currently in, it's upsetting. So of course I'm gonna be critical of it and I'm gonna speak negatively about it because I could see the, I personally, I would like to see the barracks as being something better than it currently is. I would like to see things go in the other direction. I don't think the barracks is, 
is beyond saving or it's 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 not salvageable i think the only way that things are going to get any better for the barracks is listen to the criticism instead of turning off the comments which is what you guys like to do at the barracks right whenever whenever things get rocky the comment section just turns off why don't you try listening to what people have to say that actually care about the barracks the people that have been here for the entire 13 years watching and supporting you guys and listen to what they're talking about so maybe instead of you know uh just completely ignoring everything that i say and trying to demonize me because i don't because i don't share the same worldview as you which is that i don't merely speak positively about everything that's happening people want to hear the real that's just what it is so you know stop hiding from everything steve why don't you go, why don't you guys go back to doing shit like this instead of uh promoting the heart supply on your Instagram feed. And that's the real like tragedy of the barracks currently is you guys went from support your local skate shop to support your local target. Although I don't have control over there, I can assure you the people who work there are good people and doing the best they can. If there are any wrongs, they certainly try to make them right. I don't think anybody that works for the barracks is a bad person. I just simply think that you guys are doing a bad job. Ease up a little, give them a break because you never know when you yourself are going to need one. I'll give you guys a break when you fucking do something cool. You want to know why I talk about the barracks so much? Believe me, I would like to talk about something else. And I do talk about other things. Like I talk about X Games. I talk about Street League. I talk about the Olympics. I have a whole Patreon where I, where I do other shit. But anyway, I hope you don't take all of this super personally. And maybe you can even uh, take this as some form of constructive criticism. Who knows? I mean, I, you don't come across as a particularly reasonable individual to me. So thank you all for watching, listening, subscribing, uh, leave a like, turn on the bell, fucking, I need to go eat my breakfast now. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.